Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering the other half of uh, the Grenadier kit setup being the plate carrier. Um, I've already, already posted the belt video, um, so if you haven't seen the belt video, please go ahead and watch that, either now or after this video. But in the belt video, I obviously, I talk about the belt, and I also talk about all of the problems and considerations and things like that that I see with Grenadiers now. Um, so that's really the like employment theory kind of video. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, I would go ahead and watch that. Uh, please do. Um, in addition, you if you've watched my other videos on the channel, you know that I was using a different plate carrier than this one. This one is a, a uh, Marine Corps issue Gen 3 plate carrier. Um, I am no longer um, able to use the other one. So um, for anyone that was curious about the interfacing of like, you know, the actual issued gear uh, with the setup, uh, because in those videos I mentioned that I use the same setup, it works the same way, um, this is the video. Now I can showcase that for how well that it actually works. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna to try to not talk too much about the like employment considerations and things like that and all the problems because I've already covered it. Uh, just talk about the plate carrier itself. So uh, with the plate carrier and belt combined, I have a loadout or I have the ability to carry 11 grenades with the addition of one inside the, uh, in, inside the launcher, which makes 12. Uh, 12 is usually the standard loadout for Grenadiers. Um, that's, there isn't really a standard loadout, but what I've seen most of the time is 12 HE grenades and then the addition of maybe some weird grenades like some smokes or some star parachutes or things like that. And I'll talk about that. But uh, standard loadout I have here is 12. I think it's a good number to have like on access and then the additional ones would go inside your patrol pack, assault pack, or, you know, your sustainment load. Uh, you don't have to have everything accessible to you on your kit, um, but either way, uh, 12 on the body. So I'm going to move the belt out of the way here. I've already talked about the belt. Uh, so if you haven't seen the belt video, go watch the belt video. This is just specifically talking about the plate carrier. Uh, so like I mentioned, the, the plate carrier is a Marine Corps Gen 3 plate carrier. Um, it's not that bad. Uh, a lot of people hate it and you know, I see where they're coming from, but with a little bit of like proper fitment of your plate carrier and uh, using it well with some uh, aftermarket products, it's really not that bad. Um, I haven't had a problem with it. I've worn medium and large. Obviously, you know, uh, your plate fitment is important. The larges were just a bit excessive. So when I had the opportunity to switch to the medium, I switched, switched switch to the medium. <clears throat> so on, on the front, they have the um, uh, attachment options for buckles, uh, which I put the buckles on there and then it attaches to a Shaw Concepts Arc V2 placard. Not their newest one, it's their older one. Um, I've been using this one for a long time. Uh, I don't need to replace it yet, so I'm not going to replace it until I need to replace it. Uh, inside, I have the elastic ram insert, which I really like, and I don't normally like elastic inserts. The reason being is because the it has this tigress lining, uh, which holds the pouch open enough to where I'm able to index uh, without looking at it, without um, you know, like a need of like reference. Um, and it keeps it open, but the elastic keeps the actual, the retention on the pouch, which is, which is the good thing about elastic is the retention, but the bad thing is, you know, without these pieces of Tigris, it just makes an oval, and uh, that is not an oval, right? That's a rectangle. So it doesn't really index well if you don't have these Tigris slots on there. So I really highly recommend the elastic ram insert. Uh, works really well and uh, I, I like it quite a lot. Um, on the left side here, I keep a Sharpie for no particular reason. Uh, I use it all the time to mark targets or just write down notes or something like that, but it's a really useful thing to have, so I keep it right there. 
On the bottom, I have a tourniquet. This is just inside of the loop on the bottom of the placard here. Uh, this is the tourniquet that I keep looped. Uh, what that means is I keep it um, with the tail of the tourniquet ran through the buckle and back on, onto itself so I can use that uh, on myself um, if I only have one hand to use it with. Keep that one up front there. Normally I don't like to keep tourniquets in this like exposed manner like this because it opens them up to the elements and things like that, but I just kind of keep an eye on this one as well as the one that's on my belt. I uh, just keep an eye on them and when they need to get replaced, I replace them. <clears throat> now, actually on the front of the placard here, I have a Arbor Arms horizontal five five round pouch for a 40 millimeter. Um, these are really high quality. Uh, Arbor Arms makes really good stuff and they make a lot of stuff to mod, uh, like your issued plate carrier, your Marine Corps and Army issued issue plate carriers. This one works really well. I had a bit of trouble trying to find one that fits good on the front of placards because 40 millimeter grenades are not really, um, they're wider than one column of molly, but if you just have like a single pouch, then you can put it on one column of molly. But the problem comes like, like you couldn't put six on the front of this because they would, they would hit each other too much. So I had this, this pouch is really awesome. I recommend it because you can see it has just a flat backer that is six columns wide and then the five columns of grenades or the five grenades are sewn on there. Um, the retention on these is good. The elastic holds them well, and then they have the Velcro strap. Uh, what I like about it is it has a bottom keeper. A lot of like, you know, like the issued belt for 40 millimeter, it doesn't have retention on the bottom at all, which is crazy to me, but that's how it is. Um, so I got five on, on, on the front here, and then I have an additional two on the side, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, before I move on though, I, I wanna talk about the belt itself. Um, what a lot of times guys do is they get that belt, they load it up, and then, then they wrap it around the front of their plate carrier here, and they have all of their 40 millimeter up here, and it doesn't work very well. Uh, one, you know, it's not made to do that, so it, it just doesn't do that very, very well. And two, now your 40 millimeter is in the way of your magazines, things like that. And if you are a person who is using a rifle and a 40 millimeter launcher, like most people are, then it's important that you're able to get magazines and your 40 millimeter out, right? Because if you can't use your 40 millimeter, then you know you're gonna have to use your rifle. Um, so. I hate seeing that when people have it wrapped around the front here. It doesn't fit very well. It's very sloppy. It hangs out. People lose grenades and things like that. And it just really makes a problem. So having an actual dedicated solution to putting your 40 millimeter on your plate carrier or belt is an absolute must because those things are important. You know, uh, 40 millimeter um, HE grenades are one of the biggest assets to the rifle squad. It's one of the biggest force uh, force multipliers. So they should really be well thought out and you shouldn't, it shouldn't be a last minute thing that you get the belt, you load it up and throw it on your plate carrier. That's not how it should be. It should be prioritized like it is on this, on this plate carrier. Um, now moving down, I have the Onward Research Simp pouch. I really like this one uh, because it is a good GP pouch. Uh, it holds all the essentials and nothing else. Uh, I have a headlamp. I've got cami paint, you know, need cami paint. And I have a, G, a G, GPS here, which if you see my other videos, you know that I don't really like them. Um, I'll tell you why, but it's just that these things can be spoofed, targeted, tracked, things like that. Um, so if you can bear, don't use these. I have this as a stand-in for a military GPS, which is, you know, encrypted, much harder to do those things to than this like thing that you can buy off the shelf, you know? Um, so it's a stand-in for that. If I had a military GPS, I would shove it inside of this uh, mag pouch or something like that. But then again, you know, being that you're a grenadier, this isn't, you probably wouldn't be maintaining responsibility of that. So you could probably replace this with something else. 
Uh, in the back here, I have an air panel. Um, air panels are good for all infantrymen. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily better for grenadiers uh, or less for grenadiers, but either way, you could use it to signals, do all kinds of other stuff with it. So air panel is definitely a good piece of gear to carry for infantrymen. Back up. And again, I really like the simp pouch because it's big enough to carry some essentials, but it's not so big that it gets in the way. Um, my, I, I, I'm, I'm tall, but I have kind of a short torso and long legs. So if those really big dangler pouches, they get in the way when I'm like walking up steep hills uh, with my play carrier on. Uh, this one doesn't do that. So I really like uh, the scent pouch for that, for, for that reason. Um, that covers everything on the front of the plate carrier. I, I've mentioned in my other videos that you, know, you should try to not stack too far out on the front of the plate carrier. Uh, but I feel like this is one of the situations where it's kind of inevitable. Uh, if you wanna be able to carry the amount of grenades that you're gonna need to carry, they're either gonna have to go here or here and putting them up here is a problem as well because then you know they're getting in the way of uh, your magazines and you could say you know you could prioritize like it's better to get the grenades out than the magazines out because you're a grenadier which i understand that i can see that but i put them on the front uh because you know you can still go prone with this stuff on on uh, the front of you and uh these ones are going to be the ones that you're going to unload and fire first so Definitely things to think about. Not that the way that I did it is necessarily the right answer for everyone, but that's the way that I that I, I would do it, or I would like to do it. <clears throat> okay, I'll start on the weak side. So the weak side here, or the reload side for your 40 millimeter. Uh, first thing on, on the front here, well, I'll start with the cummerbund. On, on the cummerbund, I have a shock, uh, shock, shock Concepts Arc Plate Carrier V2 cummerbund. And I really like the cummerbund. Uh, it's very similar to the Marine Corps issued one. So usually if people are kind of, kind of sticklers for unissued gear, they can't tell uh, that it isn't. And um, so that's awesome. Uh, it's very similar. It has some rigidity to it. And then on the inside, I have the uh, Shaw Concepts cover bun buckets for a little bit of padding as well as holding an additional rifle magazine. Uh, the rifle magazine carriage on this, on, on this kit is seven with an additional one that would go in the rifle for a total of eight and 12 rounds of 40 millimeter. Uh, so I think that's definitely a good place to start for the Grenadier. Um, so yeah, on the front, I have a tourniquet inside of a T3 gear pouch. Uh, I really like these tourniquet pouches because they're fully enclosed and they uh, protect the tourniquet very, very well. Uh, you can see undo one strap, undo another piece of Velcro, and then you got a tourniquet right there. I believe at this point, they have an updated version of this. This pouch I think is the Gen 2. I think now they have a Gen 3. Uh, I haven't used Gen 3, obviously, but the Gen 2 has been working great for me, so I'm sure that the Gen 3 is gonna be just as high quality as the Gen 2. Um, coming over here, I have a London Bridge Trading, uh, the, um, a double 40 millimeter pouch, um, and I have it here for a reason. One, I like this one because it has two adjustable ride heights or two adjustable sizes. Cause you know, if you're carrying HE grenades, that's fine. You just interface that snap there or the Velcro and it stays in there nice and well. Find that. It's a little bit e easier when, there, when there's a grenade inside the pouch, but there you go. Um, but if you're carrying some of the weird munitions, the taller ones, then you can set that snap or the Velcro onto the higher setting, and then you can carry those taller munitions, like the parachutes, the flares, uh, the smokes, things like that. Um, so you got five on the front, which really these ones, 
you can carry some pretty tall ones inside here too, um, but you only have the Velcro. So I would use these just for HE, and then my more important ones I would put on the side here with a form of retention being this snap as well as the Velcro, and on the side with the taller snap there. Obviously, if you don't need that, then you can just throw some HE inside there and get that down on uh, the Velcro and the snap, just like that. Um, so yeah, that's five on the front, two on the side, uh, four on the belt, and one in the gun for a total of 12. Uh, then here I have a multi-tool. This was normally on, on my belt, but to make room for the 40 mil on the belt, I had to move this up to the plate carrier. And uh, you know, a multi-tool isn't really something that's specific to a grenadier, but every infantryman should have one. Uh, you know, for all the quick fixes, op opening up ammo cans, things like that, that you're gonna need, need to do. So definitely need to have one, needs to be on your body almost all, all the time. It's just like the knife. Um, I prioritize keeping the knife on the belt because I think the knife is more important than the multi-tool, but the multi-tool is definitely a close second there. <clears throat> uh, some people are gonna ask, the way that I've attached this to the back of the plate carrier is I took the normal cummerbund Velcro sleeve off and I just used the shock cord that comes with these arc, these arc cummerbunds and I just ran it through the molly, uh, set it to where I needed to be sized to and it works just fine. Take a little bit of weight off of the plate carrier as well as um, give you a little bit of uh, stretch to it, which is nice, which you don't, nor which you don't nor normally get with the, uh, um, with the issued covered ones because they don't have any stretch to them. Uh, all right, now talk about this real quick. Uh, on this kit, you won't see a radio pouch and that is fine usually because if you're a grenadier, you sh shouldn't be a team leader or you shouldn't be a squad leader, you should be a grenadier. It should be your own responsibility. But what I've seen in some places is that they like to make their grenadiers team leaders or they like to make the team leader the team leader and then the team leader just inherently carries the 203 or the, or the 320 and he's the grenadier. And I think that has pros and cons. Some people say like, oh, you know, it eliminates the need to talk on the grenadier uh, to the target because the team leader can just do it. But I generally, I don't like it because it, the team leader has more responsibilities and the grenadier is a very important responsibility that shouldn't be divided up to someone else who's trying to do something. The grenadier is the grenadier and he should be the grenadier, right? He should be used to employ his 40 millimeter and his team leader is used to employ him and the other soldiers or Marines within his team. Um, so if you are a team leader and it's not your option, you are the grenadier as well as the team leader, then I would have to replace this with a radio pouch because you're gonna need it. Um, and then at that point, you would have to move some other stuff around your plate carrier to make more room for 40 millimeter. Uh, but if you have any type of option, maybe you are the team leader and the grenadier now, and you have some people in charge of you, of you that will listen to you, try to pitch that idea to them because you know you have more on your plate and you shouldn't be trying to employ a 40 millimeter launcher while you're also doing while you're also trying to employ your automatic rifleman your rifleman your point man and things like that like you just you should be employing your guys not a weapon system and your guys you know not a very important weapon system at that like you should be employing your rifle but you know a grenadier is a little bit more specific uh -huh. So whichever way you feel about that is the way you feel about that. That's the way that I feel about it. And if you disagree, then you know you can drop it down in the comments. <clears throat> now, moving on to the strong side. Uh, this is the side I fired my rifle with. I have a more or less identical setup, same cummerbund, obviously, uh, but I have the same tourniquet pouch up on the front here for a total of three on the plate carrier, one on the belt for a total of four. Some people think it's a bit excessive, but either way, I've got the room for them, so I should definitely carry that extra equipment. Um, 
Got another magazine inside of the Shaw Concepts bucket for one, two, three, uh, four, five. And then inside here I have a double magazine pouch holding magazines six and seven. Um, and then I would put an eighth one inside my rifle. Um, double magazine pouch is very versatile though. Uh, if, if you don't need to carry this, you need to carry these two extra magazines, you can use it to carry a smoke grenade. Uh, you could use it to carry some extra 40 millimeter, or you know you could use it to carry like a GPS, or even you could shove a radio inside there and fashion some sort of retention system with 550 quarter extra pieces of shock cord that you hopefully have with you inside like a field kit or something like that. Um, so it's there, general purpose or magazine pouch, and then it's also got loops for shotgun shells down on the bottom here. <clears throat> now. Here I have a frag grenade pouch, and this is something that gets omitted on a lot of Grenadiers kits, is the hand grenade pouch. And I understand it because they're trying to make room to uh, put, more of the 40 mil, uh, put more of the 40 millimeter pouches on their kit, but they really should still have frag grenades uh, because you know, your, your launcher, depending on the, on the rounds that you're using, your launcher, uh, the rounds are arming at about 15 to 30 meters. I know that there's lots of different ar ar arming distances based on the rounds, things like that. But generally, they're all in between 15 and, and 30 meters or so, Fi like 15 and 40 meters or so. Um, so what I'm getting at is if, you know, enemy is closer to you than that, then you really can't count on your grenade launcher working for you. So having your hand grenades uh, and still having HE to use in the fight, um, would benefit you. So uh, you really need to have them. You can see that they're not that far back on my cummerbund. I could still get that. It's not going to interface with a with a, a rucksack, or it is going to interface with the rucksack, and it's not going to cause problems. It's out of the way. Uh, if I don't need it, then I forget about it. If I do, then it's there. <clears throat> All right, that covers the sides. Uh, what I'll talk about on the plate carrier before I get to the back is how you guys are carrying your 40 millimeter launchers. Uh, and it depends on the launcher that you have. If you have an M203, no big deal, it's attached to your rifle. If you have an M320 and it's attached to your rifle, it's the same thing as an M203, no, no big deal, nothing really changes. Where it starts to change is if you have an M32 or you have an, M an M320 in the standalone configuration. And um, what I've seen work for the M320 is a single point sling uh, attached to the back of the M320 wrapped around the plate carrier so the grenade launcher hangs on your strong side and then you affix it to your belt with like uh, a bungee cord or something like that. Or, you know, there's holsters that you can buy and put straight on your belt for the M320. Um, some people like to attach that single point sling permanently to their play carrier. And I think that that could be a good or bad idea. Um, it could be good if you have some sort of quick detach system on the 32 itself, or excuse me, on the 320 itself. So you can still detach that if, if uh, you need to hand it off to someone else or something like that. Um, however, uh, if, it's, if there's no detach system to it, then I would be weary of permanently attaching a weapon to your plate carrier, depending on how you have it routed and what's, re and what's required of you. Uh, if being able to ditch your kit very quickly, if you are in water or in a helicopter crash or something like that, um, is something that you need to do, then make sure that when you're doing that, you keep that in mind and that you're not gonna be running a sling over the back through here or something like that. And then you, you've created a solid shoulder uh, strap for your, for, uh, your shoulder. Um, so just, just be careful about, about that if that's the way that you're gonna try to run it. Uh, if you have an M32, basically, you know, you back sling it and then you have your rifle too. Um, or you have an M32 and you have a pistol. Uh, so you, you could just cover your whole kit in 40 millimeter pouches. Uh, but that's a, that's a different discussion. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the back now. Uh, on the back, I have a hydration carrier. This is um, 
just a no name tactical hydration carrier uh, that I used to hold a three liter bladder. I hold a three liter uh, three liter bladder because um, it's you know the most amount of water that I can comfortably carry with a plate carrier. If for whatever reason I'm ever away from my pack uh, while I'm on patrol or something like that, which would be very strange, um, you know, having something on, on 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 the back of your plate carrier to carry a little bit of extra stuff is is a good good thing to have. So I've got that, uh, and then down here. I have a small pouch that I use to put a survival kit in if, again, I'm ever away from my uh, pack, which is very seldomly, uh, but either way, sometimes it does happen, so I have something to throw in, inside there if I, uh, if, if I want to do it. Um, one thing that I'll talk about here on the Gen 3 plate carrier specifically is once you size your shoulder straps, um, you can run this tail that's normally up in the front back through your buckle here so it's not flapping around in the front and getting in your way and bothering you and shit like that uh, so do that if you haven't done that um, other than that i've seen a lot of people that like take the soft armor out out of, out of their plate carriers and shit like that and that's a really bad I, I, idea um one you know the plate carrier isn't meant to work like that and Eventually, with the weight of the plates being in it and the, all the pieces not being in it, I'm pretty sure that it's going to tear um, because you're taking all the structure out of it that, it's, that, that it uses to uh, carry that weight. In addition, you know, it takes all the padding out of the plate carrier too and, you know, comfort's a big deal. So if you take your soft ar armor out, like you can take out your soft armor carriers if, if, if you want, like your inner carriers, but definitely make sure you leave your soft armor in your plate carrier because it's there for a reason. Uh, you know, the, your plates are rated up, up, up to a certain level, but it, why would you not want to have the soft armor behind it just in case, you know, you get shot with something really big and it goes through your plate and maybe it stops inside your soft armor, right? Um, either way, uh, Gen 3 plate here is isn't that bad. I don't mind it that, that much. I just wish it wasn't so thick up in the shoulders here. But, um, that pretty much concludes my video on uh, the Grenadier kit. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.